Our first speaker. Uh, the title of her speech, of Lana's speech today, is the checkout page is where the money is at. Lana works here at Expedia and she tries to, uh, she works on helping to improve the checkout page and increasing the conversion rate. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, please welcome Lana. Hello Toastmasters, uh, thank you for having me here. Let's start with a little quiz. Uh, raise your hand if you recently purchased any travel or hotel stay. And how many of you was on Expedia side? Okay, now I, uh, let, uh, let me, tell me please, what page do you think on Expedia booking process is the most important one? And, and give you <laughs> 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 yeah. so, um, I'm leading you to this answer, but I think the, from my standpoint, the page which is the most, which brings the most money and, uh, is a checkout page. And why is that? Because once someone is on the website and they went all the way through from picking their hotel and checking the buy, and here they are, if you lose them, it's the worst thing that can happen. So why is, so that's the first part we, as a designers uh, try to fix. In my role, I'm not working for Expedia brand, I work for uh, Expedia affiliate networks, which means that I help partners who use Expedia, Expedia APIs to improve their sites. For example, Holly here has a website called hollytravel.com. She built, used our Expedia APIs and she made her own UI and now I go and I help her to improve it so it converts and makes more money. That's in a nutshell what I do. This PowerPoint is to show these partners who have no experience talking with me directly how to do it, and give them a guide, guidance how to do it, and give a little examples and explaining why. So the next, so the first thing I w I'm going to talk about is eliminating distractions. Why? What is a distraction? Distraction. If you notice, if you ever pay attention when you check out Expedia and, or Hotels.com, it's all the links you have on the top on the bottom of your page. So you have m millions of little co links to about us and why all of an affiliate and all the other brand, brand names. So when you check out, you want to remove all that. And because when a person suddenly gets distracted and goes and follows entirely different paths, you just lost them. You don't want that. So what we do, we remove all it. And you can see in this example, where you have a regular checkout and footer, uh, header and footer, and then uh, header and footer for the checkout page. And you can see there is a difference. So first thing we do, I look at the side, I say, remove all that. So that's step number one, remove the distraction. I don't know if you can see it, but we can see here and here how little it is here, which I put a lot of it here. So the next thing is, your form fields. Usually, what do you think is most annoying for you when you fill out the form on the, on the checkout page? Mostly it's when you made a mistake and it's like the mistake is all the way on the top and you press buy now and you like have to go all the way back and figure where, what did you do and where and how to fix it. So to prevent that, we recommend with inline validation. What's inline validation? It's once you step and type step by step and you're making a mistake, you have immediate feedback saying, oh, please enter your name and or your name should at least contain two characters or your email address has to have si I'm, uh, add sign in it. So it, the messages should be very precise and clear how to fix them, otherwise you will just be frustrated and you try again and again. So to prevent errors, you have to give the exact error messages that will people understand. And so that was about inline messages, inline validation. And also people want to know, so how is this going to be used? Will it email me every day with some newsletter I don't want to hear? Will that, so, so the field that we also recommend having is little text explaining. This is where we will send you confirmation page. So text explaining what is each form field will be used is also some of the things I recommend to, to have on the checkout page. Next. And security perceptions. So this is a very interesting one because everything technically is correct, but people don't, they still don't trust your website. Why? Because they think it's kind of shady, you, you position the element wrong. So here is an example of how to do it properly. And uh, some of the studies suggest that if you put a badge that has social security encryption that you use, 
right there, it has nothing to do with you technically implementing, but if you put it there, people will trust you more. Why? I don't know. There's a perception. <laughs> and if you change the background of the page to be darker and different than all the rest of the fields, it will also help. So they will perceive it as more secure because it's different. It's, it's difficult to explain, but it's what you perceive, and that we encourage to leverage that knowledge and build, when you build a checkout page. The other thing, we, we also say that security code, something that people usually, uh, has different names for different cards. Some of them have three numbers, some of them have four numbers. So we recommend giving a visual aid and giving a pop-up screen saying, this is how a security code should look like, and that's where people will find it. So that kind of thing, the visual aid explaining where and where to find your, thing, your data on a credit card, tax saying that this uh, address you use has to be the address associated with this card. Some of the things that people usually make the most mistakes at. So those are the kind of, what, what I just explained to you are four basic pillars or four basic import, most important things when building a checkout page. And I hope you will remember them and number one, is eliminated this action. Number two, your form validation should have in-line validation. Number, th number three is the security perception. And uh, step four is, is um, what was it number four? Ah, oh, I forgot, did you go back one step? You might. Step three. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, in-line validation and the clarity in explaining what, you, what each field is for. So well, now I'll, le I'll let you ponder how to build your checkout pages and thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lana, for the job. I'll give you everyone about a minute. We can give some feedback to Lana on her speech. Or we'll be passing around the cup. Uh, you'll find some little post-it notes uh, on the table.